In this video, we're going to look at contingency tables. And contingency tables are going to be great when we uh, try to figure out probabilities of things. As long as we know how to read a contingency table, things are going to go very easily for us in making our predictions with probabilities. Now, what we have here is we have some columns, and the columns talk about those who have had a speeding violation within the last year and those who haven't. So those who got a speeding ticket are in this column. Those who didn't get a speeding ticket are in this column. Now over here, these two rows separate those who um, use cell phones while driving and those who do not use a cell phone while driving. So you'll notice that the totals table, the, these totals are empty. Sometimes they're given to us and sometimes they're not. I think it's pretty great that we can figure this out using addition and some of your homework problems may have you try to figure this out as well. So to figure out the totals, you would just add across or add vertically. So let's add across to find out how many people use the cell phone while driving. And that would be 25 plus 280, which makes 305. Let's add across to find out who do not use cell phones while driving. So that's 45 plus 405, which gives me 450. Now the total would be the number of people who, um, if we add vertically here, who had a speeding ticket last year. And 25 and 45 make a total of 70. Now, let's find out how many people did not have a speeding violation last year in this small sample. So that's 280 plus 405 is 685. Now, the grand total, which is going to be in this uh, spot to the very right here, this grand total would be the total number of people who were surveyed here. So we would just either add the 305 and the 450, or we would add the 70 and the 685, and we get the same number, 755. In fact, if you don't get the same number vertically and horizontally through these total columns, then you've probably made a mistake. So let's find the probability that a driver uses his cell phone while driving. So the total driver who uses his cell phone while driving is 305. And that's out of the total, which is 755. Oops, excuse me. 755. And that gives us a, to uh, a decimal of 0 0.404. And that's no error because that's 40.4%. Now, let's look at the probability of getting somebody out of this group of 755 people who had no speeding violation. Well, the no speeding violation total was 685 out of 755, which gives me 0.907. So most of our respondents, 90.7%, had no speeding violation. For this next question, we are going to look at the probability of no speeding violation and they use a cell phone while driving. So this is an and, which means both has to happen at the same time. So let's see, no speeding violation is in this column. So we're in this vertical column here. And they use a cell phone while driving. So that puts you in this row here. So the row of use cell phone while driving in the column of no speeding, via, or, um, no speeding violation is 280 divided by, out of our total, 700 and 55. So 280 divided by 755 is 0.371 or 37.1 percent. Now let's look at this. This is going to be an or problem. Now the and means we had to choose both this row and this column to get that number. But this is someone who says we want the probability that somebody uses a cell phone while driving. That means these two here, they use a cell phone while driving, or no speeding violation. And so that would be anyone in these columns. Okay, so it's the yellow across and the green down. So it would be these three columns, or these three cells, not columns, because it's technically two columns and two rows here. So it would be these three cells because these three cells have anyone who has been a cell phone while driving 
and no sp or the no speeding violation. So it's these three. So what we have to do is we add up, have to add up the 25 plus the 405, which makes 430. So the 430 and the 280 makes a total of 710 divided by 755. And this gives me 0 0.940, which is 94%. So for the next question, using a cell phone while driving given a speeding violation. All right, so this given implies the conditional probability. So this is the probability of using cell phone given the speeding violation. So what we have to do is we have to restrict our denominator to the speeding violation. So let's look at the speeding violation denominator. That is going to be 70, okay? So there's our speeding violation, 70, from here. Now what we have to do is we have to look at the using cell phone, or the UCP, while driving. So if we are in this column and we're only in this column, then we have to restrict ourselves to those who have used the cell phones and are in this column. So that would be 25. So 25 divided by 70 is going to be 0.357 or 35.7%. Conditional probability reduces your sample here. So, cause we're not actually choosing from everybody. We're choosing just from the speeding violation. So let's look at this here. This is the probability of no speeding violation. So no speeding violation given does not use cell phone while driving. So what we're going to do is start with a denominator of does not use cell phone. Now that would be this row, does not use cell phone and therefore that would be 450. That is our denominator, because that's the group we're looking at, the does not use cell phone group. Now we want to have chosen this group, the NSV, the no speeding violation that belong to this group, and that would be 405, because once we pick this row, we can't leave the row. And 405 divided by 450 is 0.9, or 0.90 to be a stylistic, 90%. After some reformatting here, so things will easily show up on my screen here for your video, I am going to add across these rows to get to my total, and I'm going to add vertically to get to my totals here, and this should add up to the same thing. Now, last example was easy because we had whole numbers, and adding whole numbers across and adding whole numbers vertically there, that's pretty easy to do, but fractions can be a little challenging. So let's learn a little bit about how to do this on the calculator. Now one item of note, if you're using a Texas Instruments graphing calculator, it might be nice to change out of the default math print mode and into the classic calculator mode. Now you click on the mode key, and if it's up here at the top of the screen, you have a newer calculator, and switch from math print to classic by highlighting it and hitting enter. This is an older calculator, so I can scroll down to the next page. Notice it says next, and you can see at the top here, I've got math print, print and classic. I move my cursor over here and hit enter. Now it's in classic mode. If you have a graphing calculator that doesn't give you those options, then you are definitely gonna be in classic mode no matter what. Now we click the second key and the mode key gets us back to a clear screen. Let's add across the top here. Let's add our 1 fifteenths as using the parenthesis above the 8, 1 divided by 15, and we close that off. That's our first fraction. Plus, parenthesis, 1 divided by 12, and we close that off again, plus 1 divided by 6. So here's our three fractions added together. If we add those fractions together, we get a total of, oh, 0.316 repeating. Well, let's turn that into a fraction by clicking the math key and clicking the one button or the enter key, which takes our answer and converts it into a fraction. 
or 91 sixtieths. So this is going to give us our total here. And before I write that in, let's do the other one. Let's go parentheses 4 fifteenths. Oops. Got to make sure I'm hitting the buttons there. Plus 3 twelfths. I know that can be reduced, but there's no reason to since we're going to do probabilities with them. Plus 1 sixth. And if we do that, we get an answer of 0.68, 3 repeating, which I'm going to convert into a fraction by clicking the math button and clicking the 1 button or the enter button and then clicking enter again. So now my two row totals are 19 sixtieths and 41 sixtieths. So let me quickly type that, in. let me quickly write that in here. All right, so what we have is, whoops, didn't mean to do that. All right, 19 sixtieths and 41 sixtieths. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're gonna switch back to the graphing calculator and let's go to a clear screen and let's add vertically. So here we have 1 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths. Now, if you haven't figured this out, you can actually do a pretty good job just adding the numerator since the denominators are common. Because what you might notice when you go to math frac is you might notice that it simplifies the fraction. The book and I will kind of like lean on not simplifying these fractions. So 5 fifteenths would be as good as 1 third. You'll also notice that since these are common denominators, we can go 1 half plus 3, or sorry, 1 twelfth plus 3 twelfths, which gives us 4 twelfths. And then 1 six plus 1 six gives me 2 sixths. Now, you still might be feeling like, gosh, why don't we simplify all these fractions? Well, there's really kind of no need to simplify the fractions. And if we were to add straight across this row to find our total, you can easily do that vertically. But let's just kind of for giggles here, let's go 5 divided by 15 plus 4 divided by 12. And while I'm doing this here, you can, uh, one of my reasons for choosing classic mode is we can see all the fractions on the uh, screen at once. Um, that's kind of nice. Whoa, it turned out to be one. Well, I think some of you who looked ahead and did this vertically, 19 sixtieths and 41 sixtieths is 60 sixtieths, and 60 sixtieths is one. So these chances are essentially gonna all add up to 100%. So let's look at these probabilities here. The probability of not getting caught is 41 out of 60. And that's pretty straightforward. It's just the row that basically meant not getting caught. And the probability of getting caught is 19 out of 60. Now, here's the fun thing. We are going to now do the rest of these problems and every single problem that we do after this, problems 10 through 14, are gonna be conditional probabilities with percentages, or sorry, with fractions. And we'll eventually get the percentage from that. So here we go, here's how we do it. So for problem number 10, we are going to look at the probability that the mouth chooses hole number one given the mouse is caught. So this is gonna be hole one, probability of hole one, given caught, HT. <laughs> okay, so let's figure out our denominator. Our denominator is caught. So caught will be 19 sixtieths. And our numerator is going to be hole one from the caught row, okay? So if he has caught, is he leaves hole one, having chosen the caught row, then he's going to be 1 15th in the numerator. So now you might be wondering, well, gosh, how am I gonna do that problem? Well, thanks to our calculator, we can easily do it. Our numerator is going to be one divided by 15. Now close off your parentheses and then hit the division button and then start your second fraction, 19 divided by 60th. Now I know there's a couple of you out there that might say, we don't really need this many parentheses, but doesn't this make it quite easy to read? 
and that's also good programming anyway. If we divide these two numbers, we get 0.21. Now, it's honestly best just to keep this as a decimal. That way, we can convert it into a, a percentage really easily. So 0.211, we're going to round that to a 1 because 5 or above, give it a shove. So this, if he leaves basically whole 1 and is caught, then this was a 0.211 or 21.1% chance of happening. Now, we're going to look at the mouse choosing hole 1 or hole 2 given that the mouse is caught. So again, the probability of H1 or H2 given caught. So our denominator is going to be the caught, which is the total for caught, which is 19 divided by 60. Now, he went either through hole 1 or hole 2, and those, since they are mutually exclusive, the mouse can't go through both hole 1 and hole 2 at the same time, you can add these two together. So 1 15th plus 1 12th. So you can see this problem gets a little bit more challenging to write. So let's go to our calculator here. And uh, what makes the numerator a little bit trickier is maybe we want to do the 1 15th the 1 15th plus the 1 12th first and figure out what that is. So we go 1 15th plus 1 12th, enter, 0. 0.15, math frac, 3 20ths. So our numerator is 3 20ths divided by 19 60ths. Whoops, forgot my, nine, my 1 there. 19 divided by 60. Now, a couple of you are wondering, like, could I have just left that as 0.15? You could have. You could have said 0.15 divided by 19 sixtieths. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest. You could have also made this a really big numerator by adding these two and then dividing by 19 sixtieths. I just think it's easier to break them into separate steps. And that gives you this, which is going to be 0.474. We're going to round that to a 4 because this is 5 or above. Give it a shove. So, back to my back to my worksheet here. So this numerator again uh, and denominator made a decimal of 0.474 which is 47.4 percent. Okay so for this next example we're gonna say that the mouse is not caught given the mouse chooses hole number one. Now what you might think is just the answer is going to be, um, oh, he's not caught. So the answer is just going to be 41 sixtieths. But that's not true because we're, we're isolating hole number one. We're saying, look, the mouse just ran out of hole number one. What's the chances that he's not caught? So let's look at our denominator. Our denominator is hole one. And since our denominator is hole one, what we have to do is we have to have our denominator be whole ones total here which is five fifteenths this is our five fifteenths we've chosen whole number one now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what is his chances of getting not caught within whole number one so this is going to be four fifteenths divided by five fifteenths and let's check out that percentage there. So again, thanks to the graphing calculator, we can easily do that. Let me clear this screen. So this is going to be not caught from the column of hole one. Okay, so he's not caught in, he's choosing hole number one. So this is four fifteenths, whoops, forgot my parentheses. Four fifteenths divided by 5 fifteenths, which gives me 0.8, and that's pretty nice because 0.8 is 0.80, and that's 80%. So let's put this in here. This is 0.80, which is 80%. So for the next example, the mouse is going to try to escape out hole number two and let's figure out what is the chances of him not getting caught given that he only went out hole number two. 
So our denominator is going to be 4 twelfths because this is the this is that total column of going through hole number two. And getting not caught is 3 out of twelfths within that column. So 3 twelfths divided by 4 twelfths. Thanks to the calculator, this will be pretty easy. So 3 twelfths divided by 4 twelfths. gives us 0.75. Hmm, okay, so it looks like hole one had a slightly better chance of the mouse surviving than hole number two. All right, so let's go and type, let's go and turn that into our worksheet here, 0.75, which is 75%. So our final problem is actually checking the third hole. The checking the third hole to see is the third hole the best option, or is still number one a better option than the other? So, let's see. The mouse runs out hole number three, and we are checking to see the probability of that mouse getting caught. Well, so this is another conditional probability problem, and the conditional probability is the probability that the mouse is not caught, given hole number three. Okay. So, hole number three is our denominator. So, we're going to look at two-sixths, and our denominator, sorry, numerator is going to be one-sixth, and one-sixth divided by two-sixths is going to be, I'm guessing, 50%. Now, again, let's check that out. If we go one-sixth divided by two-sixths, That gives us 50%, so that is definitely not the best option here for our little guy. Unless we're rooting for the cat, then the cat is kind of hoping for, come on, hole number three. So 0.5 or 50%. So it, this is a conditional probability problem isolating the denominator and then figuring out which number to put in the numerator based on whatever row you are locked in. Because for this last row, we had picked this for our denominator and not caught for our numerator. Whoa, didn't expect that to happen. Well, thank you for watching.